Welcome to the lecture on key parameters of seismic design. In this lecture, I will talk to you about load transfer in case of seismic events, redundancy, overstrength, and the response modification factor. Seismic effects are considered to act both along the horizontal and the vertical directions. In regular structures, the most harmful effects occurs for the horizontal component of the ground motion. This happens because structures are naturally designed to withstand gravity loads acting along the vertical directions, and the effect from vertical component of the earthquakes is mostly much lower than the structure's self-weight. The horizontal forces of the earthquake are transferred to the vertical structural members, such as columns, shear walls, or braces, via the beams and slabs at each horizontal level. When the beams and slabs at each level are connected to the vertical members, they form a diaphragm. The loads are first transferred from the diaphragms to vertical members. Columns or shear, wall, shear walls should have sufficient capacity to transfer these loads to the foundations, which in turn should safely transfer them to the competent soil. This way of transferring the loads is called load path. A structure should have a continuous load path, as described above, to withstand the earthquake effects. In case of seismic effects, structures having alternative or spare load paths are more reliable. A term related to this is called redundancy. A multi-base structure is preferred to a single base structure since its redundancy is higher. Another way to quantify redundancy is the number of plastic hinges or potential failure locations in a structural system. The higher the number of plastic hinges, the higher the redundancy. In the graph, blue dots are representing the potential plastic hinge locations. If any member fails during the event, a redistribution or resharing of the loads will occur. Redundancy increases the capacity of this redistribution since it increases the alternative load paths and or number of plastic hinges. Overstrength is another key parameter in seismic design. It's the parameter to define the difference between the actual and required strength of a member, system, or a material. The design strength of a member is generally lower than its actual strength, as can be seen in the graph. There are several reasons for this, such as the influence of the load and safety factors that are used in the design. Also, the general characteristics of steel or the reinforcement in concrete can have additional effects. Another matter is that minimum reinforcement and member size requirements should be followed. Some design procedures can be conservative, and last but not least, the fact that the participation of non-structural members is generally not taken into account plays a part. In this graph, the relationship between ductility and strength can be seen. It shows the reduction in strength demand to resist seismic forces with respect to ductility level. As described in the previous sections, inelastic deformations and thus controlled damage are the basis of modern seismic design. Inelastic behavior can be analyzed by nonlinear analysis procedures, which are generally complicated and require more time and effort. Therefore, seismic design codes are also proposing simplified procedures as an alternative, which reflect the inelastic behavior in linear analysis. These methods are using a factor called response modification or behavior factor, which represents ductility, overstrength, overall system properties such as redundancy and damping, and is used to reduce elastic forces to design force level. This factor is a tool to incorporate inelastic behavior in linear analysis. This graph shows some examples of lateral load resisting systems. The blue dots indicate the potential plastic hinge locations. When the number of plastic hinges increases, the ability to accommodate inelastic deformations increases. In such a case, the value of the response, response modification factor also increases. It should be noted that selection of the structural system entails selection of controlled damage locations and or failure mechanism. The response modification factor is also affected by material properties. So both the structural system and the material nonlinear behavior properties 
play a significant role in the value of response modification factor. This table shows the generic values of response modification factors for medium and high ductile structural systems with different materials. A moment-resisting frame system of reinforced concrete or steel material, which is designed and built with high ductile detailing that has sufficient redundancy, will have the maximum number of plastic hinges and the highest response modification factor. In contrast, a masonry wall system will have a lower response modification factor due to its non-ductile material properties and very limited number of plastic hinges. These pictures show non-ductile and ductile columns after earthquakes. The member on the right is properly detailed for ductile behavior and experienced controlled damage, whereas the one at left had extensive damage due to lack of transverse reinforcement, or in other words, improper detailing. In this lecture, some key terms and parameters of seismic design have been discussed. In the next section, I will talk more about the response spectrum. Thank you.